right. Good morning, everyone. Oh. Well, we're here we are starting out Adventures in Faith, and I don't know about you, but reaching into my pants on camera, it's definitely an adventure. <laughs> <laughs> definitely an adventure. <laughs> and I had a lot of faith that it would be fine. <laughs> my name is Reverend Alice Reed, and I'm so happy to be with you here on another Sunday morning. We are starting our annual October program of Adventures in Faith, and you might want to know why I love Adventures in Faith. And it's not because we're going to ask you to uh, commit to supporting the organization financially. It's because we take ideas and dive deep. We look at what it is in the philosophy that we might want to um, tease out for ourselves so that we can uh, begin to take this teaching to another level. Our founder, Ernest Holmes, was famous for saying we're open at the top. And all that means is that in this philosophy, there is no end to how much you can learn and grow and develop as a spiritual being having a human experience. And so this year, as we look at this idea of adventures in faith, I have been inspired to take both the Committed Giving campaign and this beautiful idea of living our teaching out loud, which is our annual theme, and playing with paradoxes and looking at where we are as a community, kind of taking our own temperature and thinking about what is our next greatest yet to be. So I'm making kind of a Capo Valley lasagna. <laughs> as I look at these different ideas and weave them together, and what better um, platform than looking at paradoxes? The, what I will say about this community is that we are marking, while well, we are 55 years old this year, yeah, pretty impressive. We have been a community for 55 years, and we've been in this building for 11 years. And when we moved to this place, when we, when we did the search to find a place to house our community and we, we um, purchased this building and we came here, I was told, I wasn't here when it happened, but I was told by the many community members that were here that it was, that this place was, this was all right. But it wasn't quite fitting the bill for the vision that we had. And so our, my invitation to you as we look at ourselves as a community is where do we want to locate ourselves? Where do, you know, do we, do we um, who we are as a community? And then we have this um, opportunity to uh, commit to our community financially. And so what I want us to do is ask the question, and help you find an answer to that is what is it that you value about this community? What is it that uh, makes you want to support this community financially with your gifts and uh, personally with your time and your talents and volunteering? Let's dive deep and, and look at the whys behind our actions. Look at the, the purpose behind what we do and how we do it. So we have some things planned for you. Hopefully, when you came in, you picked up a program. And inside the program are some um, activities that we're going to do all month. Today, we have um, a workshop that we're going to do that's called Fear to Faith. There's a, um, <laughs> there's a great saying that uh, came to me while I was preparing my remarks for this morning. And it goes something like this. Change happens when the pain of remaining the same becomes greater than the pain of change, right? And I would say that it's very much the human experience that oftentimes we wait for that push, right? We wait for that, that something gets uncomfortable and, and then we decide we're going to shift things or make some changes. But what if true to the tenets of this philosophy, what if 
we tapped into our heart's desire first. Before change got uncomfortable, before we had to do something, so that we could get clear on the whys and the purpose for why we're here and the things that we valued. And then we allowed that passion, if you will, to draw us forward. I think that sounds like a much better proposition, don't you? <laughs> so All Month is designed to do that, to tap into our passion and the things that we value and to, and to look at them. And one of the tools that can be very useful in helping us get um, next week's talk comfortable with discomfort, <laughs> one of the tools that we can use is paradoxical thinking to begin to allow ourselves to use our minds to hold what seem like two conflicting ideas, to consider that one idea that seems like it's the opposite of the other idea might both be true. When we look at um, paradoxes, some of my favorites that come to mind, you now I, I come from a 12-step background as many of you know. And so one of my favorites is surrender to win. Huh? Surrender to win? Yeah. Yeah, and that comes through the 12-step traditions. And you might find that in some of the more con the consciousness traditions where we have this idea that we hold that surrender actually puts us in a, um, a more winning place, a place where we can begin to open up and have new experiences. The other one that I really like is you have to give it away to keep it, right? We have two ideas here, right? One is giving something away, one is keeping it. And the, that is the idea that whatever knowledge, whatever insights, whatever emotional maturity that we come to, that it's only in really sharing it with others that it begins to truly land in us. Anyone who has taught a class or a workshop knows this to be true that when you begin to share your wisdom with others, it begins to really find a home in your own consciousness. You've got to give it away to keep it, another paradox. I read that um, Einstein, in coming up with his theory of relativity, relativity, was contemplating how an object could both be at rest and moving dependent upon the position of the observer. And it was his ability to stretch his thinking to this, what he thought was either or, movement or staticness, that availed his genius mind to be able to conceive of a new idea, a new understanding, a discovery of, if you will, a principle that, that he hadn't been able to tap into yet. And when we think of this from a brain science point of view, in order to be creative, we need to be able to think differently. We need to be able to let go of the things that um, are familiar to us in order for us to create something new and different. And I would go further on to say that when we are in a creative mode, that we're really in a discovery mode. That something in an us opens up, we let go of the familiar, and we allow ourselves to catch an idea. It's been said that everything is already completely fully understood, known, and uh, in its full capacity in consciousness. And that we, as uh, individuals, human beings, have access to that higher mind, have access to consciousness. Um, in our philosophy of se with Center for Spiritual Living, which uh, we're only about 100 years old, and when we first came about, when Ernest Holmes first started this movement, we were referred to as religious science. Paradox? Yeah. <laughs> Religion and science, how do they go together? 
So what I want to say is this idea of paradoxical thinking is not new to us in this philosophy. We're just going to elevate our awareness to it. We're going to begin to up level and open ourselves up to these ideas of paradoxes and how they can uh, create a pathway for us to what I like to refer to as possibility thinking. Because we can problem solve all day. I've been talking about that for the last two months, I think. We can problem solve all the time. But when we're problem solving, our mind is still in the problem. But if we want to experience vision and passion and newness and that greater yet to be, then it is our work to up-level our thinking so that we can access possibility thinking. What I'll say about the theory of relativity, the discovery of um, the double helix and the DNA and all kinds of scientific discoveries is that they were revelations and discoveries. When, when um, Einstein discovered this theory of relativity, it didn't, he didn't change the physics of the world. He revealed something that already existed. When the science discovered gravity, it's not like, oh, now we have gravity before we didn't, <laughs> right? <laughs> no, no, we, we discover these truths in life. We discover these physical laws, and likewise, we're working with spiritual laws. And we open our, when we open ourselves up to spiritual laws and how they move through us, well, that's really the crux of what we teach here. We have a couple of paradoxes be beyond religious science um, in our philosophy. Um, oneness, we teach this principle of oneness, and yet we also teach that you are an individuated expression of that oneness, right? So we hold this idea of oneness, and we hold this, and we value the individuated expression of oneness, another paradox. And when we're looking at paradoxes, what I would say is that the very crux of our teaching, the creative process, is a paradox in and of itself. And so Mary, if you can bring up the slide that I have for the creative process. Oh, she wasn't at her station. Huh, where's the words? <laughs> they were there last night, here we go. Okay, we have the uh, creative process is this um, model that Holmes used to help us understand how consciousness comes into form. And so we use this teaching symbol, right, of the V. We put our arms straight up. We know that the all consciousness is always descending into matter. Spirit is always uh, expressing itself by means of life. And so we start with the infinite. Next then we move through the subjective. That's the level of consciousness that we hold between our own ears and the, also the level of consciousness that is what I would call the collective. So the infinite moves through the subjective to experience the finite, another paradox. We use these paradoxes, if you will, so that we can be open to a new idea, a new way of thinking, a new possibility. And so the creative process is, I think, it's like this, once you understand that and begin to work with it, when you begin to understand that everything is created twice, first in consciousness and then in form, and that you are an active part of that process, you can be passive. I've, I've done it. You have too. <laughs> the passive use of the creative process is when you have some way of thinking, you don't investigate it, you're not curious about it, and it keeps showing up over and over again, like that boyfriend that showed up in Mark and Joe and Harry. <laughs> or that, that job you had that kept giving you the same experience over and over again until your awareness raised and you could begin to change your thinking. 
that's the creative process passively. We can use the creative process actively by paying attention to what it is we want to experience, by investigating the beliefs and the thoughts, our piece of the subjective, so that when the infinite finds itself sifting through your subjective, it has a clear pathway to your greater good. Cool? Get it? It's really juicy. I want it really juicy that we can use this process to change our lives, to have different experiences when we want change, what, to begin to step into possibility thinking. We talk about this idea of oneness and the one mind, and um, actually, we're, we're, I'm teaching a class right now where we're looking at these big ideas, and there's been a little bit of debate about the one mind and this idea that everything that has ever happened or going to happen is already in full existence in the infinite. That's, that's a pretty big claim, don't you think? Yeah. But when you look at how science is just discovering what already is, I think it's completely probable. And then when you look at the practitioners of this philosophy who use this creative process through our um, affirmative prayer, affirmations, and other uh, taking classes and that have changed their thinking and had a different experience, there's proof as well. We used to be referred to as religious scientists. You don't hear that too often anymore, but I do see us as spiritual scientists proving that creative process over and over again. I think one of the confusions comes about because we live in a culture that's always focused on the finite. It's always focused on the, the circumstances, the events, the things that were the tangible, if you will, the bills that come in every month, the money that you need to pay your bills, the, the, the lack or the abundance of relationships in your life. We tend to focus on the finite as opposed to recognizing that the real power is in the infinite and that when we can relocate our thinking to the infinite, we can actually have an effect on our finite experience. And so Holmes, in the glossary of the Science of Mind textbook, talks about mind this way. And so if we could switch to the first quote. So it's a long quote. I want to put the, the words up there for you. I'm also going to read it. It's, it's, it's very clear, but it's a little complex. There is no such thing as your mind and my mind, his mind, her mind, and God's mind. There is just mind in which we live, move, and have our being. Mind is consciousness and subconscious, is, is both conscious and subconscious. Conscious mind is spirit, either in God or in man. Unconscious mind is the law of conscious mind acting and is therefore subconscious and sub or subjective. Mind is potential energy while thought is the dynamic force which produces the activity of manifestation. It, you know, if you have a science of mind, go to the glossary under M's. This is right there. So just, but, if, but here's the, here's the thing. Ernest Holmes is talking about the creative process here. He's talking about that mind is potential energy, that all potentiality lives in mind, and that we can access it with our thought, and that thought Thought is the dynamic force which produces our experience. Are you following me? Do you get this? Yeah. Is it a big idea? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it is a big idea. It's an idea that I have to come back to every time my heart gets broken. It's an idea that I have to come back to every time I get disappointed. It's an idea that I have to come to every time I have a false belief about the world, you know, doing it to me, whatever it might be. I have to come back to this principle that mind is potential energy, it is all possibility, and that my work is to, is to use my thought as the dynamic force. 
to shift my experience. Now, th this is... This is amazing spiritual truth, and I do not know why we, have, we don't have standing room only in this sanctuary right now when I talk about a power that you can access to shift not only your life, but the world around you. This is an amazing technology, a spiritual technology that we have access to. I'm getting a little excited, I know. <laughs> But it's really exciting, you know? I feel like Einstein discovering the theory of relativity, you know? I'm like, wow, it's really cool. It's like the secret sauce of life for me with this philosophy. And, you know, if, if you can imagine that creative process chart that I showed you a little earlier, what I want to say to you is that the engine behind that creative process is love. Not romantic love, but that love that opens us to greater possibility, that love that opens our minds and opens our souls so that we can indeed be what I like to think of as mules for consciousness. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It needs us. Consciousness needs us to have the experience of whatever is held in the highest mind the highest ideal. And so as we move through this month, we're going to be looking at both the pathways to allow spirit to move through us in ways that are dynamic and create the activity of manifestation in our life, but we're also going to look at the things that might be in the way. So we have a wonderful potluck uh, for you this afternoon and then after the potluck we're going to do a little workshop called Fear to Faith and that too is very paradoxical because we look at the things that um, are in our lives that are causing upset are causing us if you will a slowdown of the things that we want to see in the world or in our own life we're going to look at those things and we're going to we're going to tap into the fear that keeps them manifesting over and over again, and we're also going to look at the faith that can pull us through to a different experience. And so we'll do a fear to faith today. Next Sunday, we're going to do a town hall where we're going to have a dialogue about our community and the things that we love and the things that challenge us. And then the following Sunday, we'll do a visioning. And a visioning, if you're not familiar with it, is a spiritual practice that opens us up to greater possibility. And so between the fear to faith, the, the conversation and dialogue and the visioning, I have complete faith that there will be a new idea or a new possibility that will begin to uh, bubble up in our community as we look at what is our next yet to be. See, I, I, was, um, I was watching TV the other night and I was thinking about this topic of the creative process and how it works and how we can access it both consciously and unconsciously. And I, um, and I know that all creatives know that you have to start from a blank page. You know, you have to start from that place of, of all possibility in the blank page and let it come through. And so I came across this this movie that reminded me of that process, but in a different way. It was called A Million Miles Away. Has anybody seen it? It's on Netflix. And it's the story of a boy that came to this country as a migrant worker with his family, just up in Salinas, picking food for, uh, for you know, a lot of our produce comes from that part of the country. And he had a dream that he wanted to be an astronaut. Migrant worker, astronaut. Paradox? Yes, absolutely. What could seem further away from picking grapes and strawberries and lettuce to going into outer space with NASA? 
And so the story talks about how he held this idea and this dream and this desire to be an astronaut and how he overcame all kinds of obstacles. He became an engineer. His first engineering job, he walked up to the front desk to, because there was a light bulb out in his office and the receptionist handed him the keys and said, you must be the new guy, the mop's over there. Yeah. And those were, you know, that's just a little vignette of, I'm sure, of many of the obstacles that he uh, was up against because of where he came up in the country and where we were in our own evolution as a country. And yet he kept at it. He applied to NASA no less than 12 times. He was rejected 11 times. And in the 12th time, he flew to Florida to hand deliver his application. He was accepted into the uh, NASA program and he had to go through even more obstacles, but he eventually went into space in 2011 on the Discovery space shuttle. And I love the story. I mean, it, it, I was so moved by it because I was watching how this person used the, the finite was, he was a mer migrant worker. His parents were not even citizens. That was the finite that he was working with. But the infinite was, he had a deep desire to go into space and be an astronaut. And so he kept his mind in the infinite, and he gave no power to the finite. He gave power to the infinite. He gave power to his dreams. He gave power to his goals. And that's how the creative, the creative process works in your life when you engage it. If our hero, Jose Hernandez, had used the creative process passively, what do you think he would have experienced? The stereotypical life of a, mi a migrant worker. Now that is a very tangible example. But I want to tell you, great or small, the things that you dream about, the things that you hope for, the things that you long for are just as accessible to you when you engage that creative process. So my invitation to you this month is to stretch your mind free it from the things that you think you know and begin to explore paradoxical thinking. Uh, sit down and write a list of even simple paradoxes. One I read was sitting can be more tiring than walking. Simple, <laughs> simple, like it's, it can be true depending upon your circumstances, right? And so if you can look at those pairs of opposites and begin to open your mind so that it can hold both truths, you'll begin to stretch your thinking. And you'll help us in the collective here to begin to access possibility thinking. Stop that. <laughs> I think... The paradox of talking in silence is coming forward for me. So, <laughs> so my invitation is to embrace paradoxal thinking. We're going to dive deep for four weeks, actually five weeks, but four weeks of that um, we'll also be looking at our community and taking a deep dive with that. And so one of the tools that we use, the spiritual technology that we use, is affirmative prayer. So join me in this affirmative prayer as I speak this word that there is one powerful, absolute, and self-existent cause, that that divine wisdom, that divine intelligence is always filtering itself through each one. So I claim for each one of us that we are the beautiful repository of the infinite and that we allow ourselves to dive deep into our hearts and our minds and be open to possibility so that that divine mind can become our divine experience. I trust that each one is open and available 
willing to look at those places they weren't willing to consider before, to open their mind to new potentiality so that that perfect creative process can use us and be used by us to create a more magnificent now. I'm so grateful, grateful for our willingness, grateful for the way the universe works, grateful for our willingness to stretch. And I know that the result will be powerful beyond our expectations. So we simply surrender to win. We let go. We let spirit. And together we say, and so it is. Thank you.